Hey, everybody. Welcome to Protecting Your Investments, brought to you by Lemonian and Drought and Foundation Repair. My name is Johnny, and I'll be your host today. So who are we? What do we do? And why should you listen to us? So we've been in business for the last 50 years. Uh, we do water mitigation, mold remediation, and foundation repair. And we're specifically talking about foundation repair today. So if you don't know anything about us as a company, or maybe you do, but you've only used our services on one side of the aisle and not the other, say you've had a sewage loss or something like that. Today, we're going to specifically talk about some of our foundation repair stuff. And you can actually go all the way back to episode two, I believe it is, uh, where I sat down with Cody Beaver. He is one of our consultants for foundation and, and really kind of break down what it looks like whenever he comes out to your house. But today we're going to specifically talk about one of the things that we do in in the foundation side, because I really want to do a deep dive into each one. It's really easy to say we do anchors and we do wellers and stuff like that, but really understanding the why behind it, I think is important for most people. And, and sometimes things sound really good um, and maybe they're not. And other times you hear something and you're like, oh, well, that doesn't sound that cool. What does that mean? Um, and you don't really understand the why behind it. So today we're going to specifically talk about encapsulation. And encapsulation can be done in a basement or in a crawl space. So before we move on and really start talking about what that process looks like, let me give you a couple of reasons why encapsulating spaces is really important. So let's start off talking about a crawl space. Um, because you can encapsulate a basement as well, but a lot of people that have crawl spaces here inside of the state of Kansas, uh, they're going to have moisture issues. And that's one of the main things that we are looking at to prevent if we are encapsulating. So moisture obviously can lead to a lot of different things. You can have microbial growth. Um, crawl spaces are generally really kind of nasty areas. You know, you've got piping under there. You've got your insulation under there. A lot of crawl spaces are ventilated um, to help just kind of move air through there. The downside to that is, or any space in your house that you don't regularly go is, if you have mice, they're going to live down there. And crawl spaces are known for just being kind of gross spaces that uh, that don't really get a whole lot of love or a whole lot of use. And that's that's a problem for a lot of different reasons. Um, reason one, if you have a moisture issue in your crawl space, you can you can end up having a lot of mold growth, microbial growth under there. Um, mold's main job is to break down materials. It consumes it, breaks them down, and eats them. Any uh, any cellulose material, meaning it was once living. And this isn't a this isn't based on on mold we're not going to talk in depth about mold but it is one of those key factors that that you need to think about if you have a crawl space and even in circumstances where you maybe have a moisture issue in your basement um, this can be a major issue as well and one of the things that i think a lot of people have a misconception when they hear moisture issue is they're thinking i have a leaky pipe i have sewage backflowing in um, you know, my hot water heaters dripping, whatever the case may be. And that's not always the, that's not always the case. Moisture is in the air. You know, it's, it's humidity. If you've ever gone out on a hot Kansas day, um, it's humid. A, a thunderstorm rolls in for 20, 30 minutes, dumps a bunch of rain, rolls right back out. Your temperatures are still up high. What do you have? You have a ton of humidity in the air. And just like it's thick and heavy, that same moisture is going into that crawl space. And the thing is, it doesn't have to be a hot day. If you have a high humidity anywhere, I mean, you could get a ton of snow and have high humidity. Um, just for the simple fact that, that that moisture is hanging out in the air. So the misconception is an issue only in the summer is a big issue. Or only in the spring, only in the fall. You know, you can have high humidity all year round. And if you have that high humidity, you're you're most likely going to have some sort of growth going on. 
So let's talk about the other kind of, you know, gross factors about crawl spaces, if you will. Um, generally, they're not very clean. Generally, there are pests of all various kinds that could range anywhere from from bugs, spiders, snakes, mice, groundhogs, badgers, pretty much anything that's going to be real comfortable in a nice dark space where you're not messing with it and it can get away from, you know, maybe other predators or uh, it just wants to hang out down there. And maybe it's, you know, like a snake is going to go down there because there's mice down there. And so when you have these openings or when you have these this ventilation process in that crawl space, you really are going to lead to a lot of additional issues if you're not careful. So that's a lot of stuff to talk about. So aside from this, the, the secondary damages that can happen through the mold growth, wood rot, so on and so forth. Another major issue that most people don't realize is if you're in your living room on the first floor and you have a crawl space underneath you, 50% of the air you breathe is coming from that crawl space. So if there is mold growth or you have mice under there or sewage under there or you name it, a certain amount of that is coming up into your living space. And this can be extremely dangerous no matter who it is, but if you have young children, older people in the home, you maybe have respiratory issues to begin with, such as you know asthma or extreme allergies, maybe you have uh, allergies to pet dandruff or something like that, then this can be exacerbated by that crawl space area. So that's one of the reasons that we, we really encourage people to, to get their crawl space taken care of. Now, a lot of people are, are only going in that crawl space when they've got a major issue. That means a pipe has burst, there's sewage in there, um, you name it. There's a lot of different reasons why people may go in there. Maybe your energy bill is extremely high and you're thinking, what the heck can I do? Well, that's one of the big things about encapsulation is not only are we going to create a secondary environment down there, but most people are going to see a reduction in energy cost by about 20% each year. So that's pretty huge, especially in this economy where everything keeps getting more and more expensive. If you could cut 20% off of your energy bill each month, for some people, that's quite a feat. Uh, you know, it's like, I'm a dad, and so I don't like when people leave lights on around the house. I have to pay for that. Well, if I had a crawl space, I would definitely want to get it encapsulated because it's going to help pull down those costs. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what a lot of people are going to assume a crawl space looks like, or maybe it does look like that. Maybe this is your crawl space, you know. So this is a this is a pretty common crawl space. Um, really anywhere in the country you're going to go into. And so what you have is obviously you have your insulation up top. You have a barrier um, on the floor or what used to be considered a barrier. And these are essentially giant garbage bags that they laid down. Um, the issue with this is it's not really preventing anything. If you had a lot of water, it's going to seep through. If you have a lot of other issues, mice, bugs, whatever, it's going to seep through that barrier. Um, that barrier, as you can see, is not affixed to anything. It's There's open spaces. There's <clears throat> even dirt that's visible without any type of covering on it. And this can happen easily. Not only can it happen if you have to go down there or your plumber has to go down there or whoever, HVAC, some units, some HVAC units are actually located in crawl spaces, um, which if you think about that, that's that's really nasty because you got to go down there and you got to change out that filter. You got to Lord only knows what is living down there. And, and so it leads to a lot of additional issues. This is another good example of a crawl space. This is pretty common. <clears throat> you know, your your uh, insulation is not really doing you any good hanging down like that. Um, there's a number of reasons that this could happen. 
This could be due to just poor installation of the insulation. This could be due to maybe a cat got in there and is making itself home to have kittens, mice, uh, a number of different critters will get in there and tear your insulation all the heck and back and leave it a mess. And honestly, it can just be over time. Um, insulation loses its R value over time. If it gets wet, if it's a high humidity area, it's, it's going to have those moisture issues and it's going to wake up a certain amount. So as it gets heavy, it can fall, it can buckle. And this is, this is not really uncommon. So this is a crawl space that, um, that we've actually gone in. We've done work in this. Uh, as you can see, there's there's already tape on the, the ventilation areas. So we're kind of blocking that off prematurely, leveling the floor. We want everything to be nice and level and look neat. And there's a few reasons. First of all, you don't want to be down there if you plan on using this crawl space for storage, which a lot of people do once we've done encapsulation on them. Um, you don't want to be walking around down there and there be a you know six inch hole and you step off in it. Not only that, but when we put all of our stuff in, when we encapsulate that crawl space, we want to make sure that nothing is moving around, nothing is shifting, and we're not going to have any issues in the future. So as you can see, this, this kind of bubbly looking mat here, this is actually a drainage mat, uh, and it does a couple different things. We cannot wave a magic wand and stop moisture from coming through that dirt and trying to get in. What we can do though, is we can give that moisture an avenue. So it's not just sitting under there. Water's always going to take the path of least resistance. So what we really want to do is shuttle that water away and try and get it out of that dirt. And there's a few different ways we can do that. This is a sump basin. Um, sump basins are great, especially in places like this. Because if you have a high water table for some reason, um, maybe you live near a naturally occurring spring, maybe you have, um, you're blessed with rainfall, and like we are here in Kansas. Uh, but if you have a lot of drainage towards your house, maybe the grade is inappropriate, or, you know, name it. You There's a number of different reasons why a sump basin would be practical and usable. So as you can see here, we've already got the, the gravel down. We've got the sump basin in place. This thing's going to help pump water out. And then we can encapsulate around it. And this is the cool part, is the encapsulation process really allows us to seal everything up nice and, si nice and sound and tight. Um, you know, you got your drainage mat under there. It's going to help wick moisture away from that dirt. Uh, but you know, just like this, this crawl space here, you know, you've got a hot water heater down there, pretty nasty little space. We can go in and encapsulate that. Well, now you've just taken that space from this to this. You're not only are you improving your overall energy savings and efficiency, your units are having to work less hard and you've now got a usable space. You could store totes down there. Um, if you are running a dehumidifier, which we may still recommend, especially if you're in a really high humidity area, just to help make sure everything gets away, we can tap that straight into like the sump basin. You know, you're, you're just getting that stuff out of there. Now you've got a usable space inside of your home. Now you're no longer breathing really nasty, dirt, microbial growth, stuff like that, air in your house. And so as we go through, and, and we're still, again, talking specifically about crawl spaces at this point, once we get our drainage mat down, we're then going to use a 20 mil vapor barrier. And what that does is it doesn't allow any vapor from that's going to come under that drainage mat. It doesn't allow vapor to come through or around and into your space. So now we've just locked all that vapor outside of the outside of the home. Uh, in that area, of course, it doesn't it doesn't take vapor out of the entire house, um, and it doesn't prevent anything like a, a water leak or anything like that. But what it does is it doesn't allow anything coming in. 
the nice thing about it is it's 20 mil. So it's, it's really nice and thick. You don't have to worry about, you know, like that giant trash bag on the ground. You're not going to tear a hole in it unless you're really trying to. But what we do is once we've got that down, we then go up the walls and we adhere it to the wall. And there's a couple different ways we do that. Um, well, when we're adhering it to the wall, we're actually drilling into the wall and putting buttons in. And that way it's actually suctioned and, and held to the wall by those. And it's kind of like an anchor. If you've ever put an anchor in, it's straight into the concrete. Another cool thing about this is it eliminates some of that material contact. So you're not having to conjoin materials. And of course, we do have to do that. And what we do is we actually seal that up. We caulk it uh, along the, the base and then we, we tape everything off and we just make sure everything's really nice, tight, looks good. Um, and that you're not going to have any of those issues. This is a really cool one. I, I personally really like this crawl space just because it's, it's just the way it's made. You've almost got a natural shelf. Somebody's dug into the ground you're able to walk down through there. Now you've got all this storage space. If you've got, if you're, if you like to do canning, if you like to do whatever, you can now stick all this stuff down here. You can use it for extra storage for kids, toys, whatever the case may be. And it's just a really nice space. Now, if that was a dirt crawl space, um, my guess is nobody's going to want to store their stuff down there that has any value to it. But once you've got that encapsulation again, of course, you're then able to stick stuff down there and, and, and feel comfortable that it's not going to get damaged or destroyed. This is just another example. I like this one because it kind of shows that unit there um, and how we go around and move around those things. You know, we're not going to take things out, but we're going to go under them and around them, and then we're going to seal off to them, and that way we don't have any, any issues coming in through there. This is another good one, really good looking, clean crawl space. And most people, if they looked at that and didn't know we were talking about crawl spaces, they wouldn't believe it's a crawl space. And again, these these photos are just to kind of give you a good idea. Again, I want I want people to understand what that encapsulation looks like and how it's it's vastly different. Now, this is actually we've moved on from um, the crawl space and we're into a basement. And if you can kind of see how the material changes um, down at the bottom, you can see there's a tile floor and then there's um, a tan material and then there's a different colored material before you hit the wall. And that's because this actually has a drain tile system in. So that means these people were getting moisture in through the concrete or they were having some sort of table, water table issues. So there's a sump basin in, and this encapsulation versus being the 20 mil, we would go with a 12 mil encapsulation because it's just going on the walls to help make sure that any moisture trying to come in through those walls are not able to penetrate. And we're going to use basically the same method to do that. We're going to adhere it to the wall. We're going to use the buttons and seal everything up really nice. It's going to look good um, because if you seal it off and it looks like crap, I mean, let's be honest, you're not going to want to have people over there and you got this wavy wall that looks silly. And so that's part of it. You know, it's, it's part of taking that pride in your work and making sure that it's done right. This is that same basement. So really nice space. Um, you know, you put in some egress windows and really you've got a nice little space. You could add additional bedrooms. It looks like it's already plumbed and everything for a bathroom. You've got kind of the cool uh, stairway down. I like I like spiral stairways. I don't know why, but um, you know it's a nice aesthetic. And and again, the end cap or encapsulation on the walls doesn't jump out at you. It's not overly intrusive. It's not anything crazy, uh, and it kind of looks like it's in place. And the nice thing about this is too. If you were to frame out in front of it, you could actually hang drywall. Now, I wouldn't go poking holes in it and trying to hang stuff that way, but you you could. You can hang drywall or honestly, it's a basement. It's 
you know, if you've got kind of a, a man cave thing going on down there or a game area or what have you, it's a nice space still yet. Um, this is actually, this is a, a crawl space as well. Um, I forgot to put this in here, but this I just wanted to kind of show, you know, even with those large off to the right hand side of the screen, um, you know, there's a large hump of something. I honestly don't know what that is. Um, and it could just be a change in level in the floor. But again, I think it's a neat way to show how that can be worked around. Back to the basements. Um, so as you can see here, this is another one. It looks it's got some drain tile in there. They've had to remove some concrete. But a lot of people are going to look at their basements, especially if they're unfinished and, you know, especially if they're having issues. And there sometimes is this thought of, well, we couldn't do anything without, you know, cutting this out, moving this, having these people come in. It's going to cost us an arm and a leg and then some. And and that's just simply not the case. A lot of times we can work around whatever is existing there. Like, you know, you've got a, a sewage line right there. They're able to go behind it. And obviously it's not touching the wall. Um, but you know, on the far wall, you've also got some, it's probably a power uh, box or something along those lines. And it's not that hard to encapsulate around that stuff and, and not have it be more of an issue than it already is. So one of the things that I really want to impress and encourage everyone to do is if you do have issues, whether it's a crawl space, whether it's a basement, if you're having moisture issues, Remember, it's going to lead to secondary damages. It's not your health and your financial investment in your home is not worth saving a few pennies to kick the can down the road and ignore it. And unfortunately, a lot of people tend to do that, especially in this kind of economy. And I get it. I get it. But if you're in Kansas, give us a call. We'd love to come help. You can even... Um, just send us a, you know, an email. You can get on our website at lemonian.com. But one of the big things is the simple fact that if you don't get something taken care of, you're going to have secondary issues. And those moisture issues are not going to matter whether they're in a crawl space or whether they're in your basement. Um, and unfortunately, ultimately, it will lead to to more financial hardships, the longer it goes, because it's not going to stop itself and it's not going to change and not going down there and not looking at it doesn't change the fact that there's an issue. One of the things that I highly recommend, um, and if you've watched any of our episodes previously, you're probably going to know what I'm going to say next. And that's the fact that you need, if you're not inside of the state of Kansas, you need to find a reputable company to do the work. You don't want to spend a bunch of money and them either do shoddy work or they don't really know what they're doing. If the price seems too good to be true, it probably is. And I say this from a position of if you if you buy cheap, you usually buy twice. And I'm not saying that they're all terrible. What I am saying, though, is be very cautious because you're having someone come into your home. They're going to quote you. They're going to do work in your home. And if they don't have some sort of warranty, um, you you may be stuck with a with a lemon. Now, like us, our warranties generally range from 25 years to lifetime warranty, depending on what service you get from us and and what it is as far as the foundation side goes. And that's, I think, a very important thing, because if you have a company that won't stand behind the work they've done, then they don't really believe in the work they're doing. So, again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. You can go to lamunion.com. That's L-A-M-U-N-Y-O-N.com. Or feel free to give us a call at 1-800-528-5535. 